Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna talk about Portugal. Portugal, again Portugal, yes, again Portugal. Portugal is a wonderful country and I believe you probably know that. But if you're considering moving to Portugal, there are a few things you may need to know before you actually move to the country. Some of them are very positive surprises, so if you like Portugal, you'll like the country even more. On the other hand, like in every country, there are some aspects of living in Portugal that may not please everyone. In this video, we're going to cover 7 facts to consider before choosing Portugal as your new home, including both the positive and negative sides of living in this beautiful small European nation. And here are the topics we're going to cover in this video. The flexible immigration laws in Portugal, the rather high taxes in Portugal, the fact that the Portuguese economy is heavily reliant on tourism, the Portuguese language, the state of the Portuguese property market, salaries and cost of living in Portugal, and finally the climate of Portugal. And before we start the usual talk, you already know it, if you want to travel, move or invest abroad, hit the like button, check our other videos, the videos are there waiting for you on the channel. After watching a few of them, you can book a consultation call with me, the link is in the description, let's plan your immigration strategy together. And most importantly, subscribe! Let's start! And we're gonna start with one of the biggest advantages of living in Portugal, its flexible immigration laws. Portugal is by far the most flexible country in Western Europe when it comes to immigration laws for non-EU citizens. There are many categories of visa and residence permits that range from self-employed persons and remote workers to businessmen to retirees and investors. It is also quite easy to stay in Portugal if you find a full-time job. These policies are helping Portugal to keep its population stable. In the past decade, the population of the country started to decline although slightly. Currently, Portugal is showing a slightly growth in its population, mostly due to its net migration rate. So not that many people are having children in Portugal, but many people are choosing Portugal as their new home. Here we go with a few examples of how flexible the immigration policy is in Portugal. If you come from a visa exempt nation to Portugal and find a job with a proper contract, you can apply for a residence permit from inside the country. This is not possible in the majority of the countries in Western Europe. Another interesting advantage is that Portugal accepts dual citizenship if you go with the naturalization route. So Portugal, an easy country to move to if you have a job or any other type of income, and also one of the easiest countries to stay in the EU and inside the Schengen area. Finally, it is also a relatively easy country to become a citizen if that's your ultimate goal. Now we're gonna talk about taxes in Portugal, which are not that much as an advantage as the immigration laws. Portugal is a country with very high tax rates. A good number of expats moving to Portugal can benefit from the Portugal Non-Habitual Residence Program, which offers a number of tax advantages for a period of 10 years. This has helped Portugal to market itself as a low tax option for expats, but this is highly debatable. So do not let yourself be allured by Portugal thinking that it is a low tax country. Most types of income are taxed heavily in Portugal. Portugal uses a progressive tax system at a personal level, which currently ranges from 14.5% to 48%. Other types of income such as capital gains, rental income and dividends are also taxed at quite high rates. So, if you're coming to Portugal and stay more than 6 months a year, you'll become a tax resident in the country. In this case, bear in mind that a good part of your income will be shared with the taxman. Even if you are in the Portuguese non-habitual residence program, there are a lot of types of income in the Portuguese NHR, which just have partial discounts and in some cases they do not have any type of tax break. The next factor you should consider before moving to Portugal is the tourism sector. The country's economy is actually heavily reliant on tourism. Roughly 20% of Portugal's GDP comes from the tourism sector. This has a number of advantages, but also disadvantages. If you're coming to work or start a business in the tourism sector, there will be plenty of opportunities in most parts of the country, but especially in the coastal regions and on the islands. Hotels, apartments, bars and restaurants, day trips, transportation services, a good part of the Portuguese workforce orbitates around tourism. As everything, there is a good side to that, but also a bad side. Tourism is one of the factors pushing real estate prices up high in the country. The other problem is that most other economic sectors in Portugal are mostly underdeveloped. So if you're coming to Portugal to start a business or find a job, make sure that there is a demand in your sector if you're not going to work with tourism. The next factor you should consider is the Portuguese language. The Portuguese language may seem difficult at first, especially considering its complex sounds, but learning it is actually very worth it. 
Despite its relatively small size and population, Portugal has approximately just 10 million inhabitants. Portuguese is actually one of the most spoken languages in the world by number of native speakers. There are approximately 220 million native speakers of Portuguese in the world. Brazil is the country with the highest number of Portuguese speakers. But apart from Portugal and Brazil, you can find native speakers of Portuguese in countries that were Portuguese colonies in Africa and even in Asia. Apart from that, learning Portuguese is also a good investment, as it will open you the gates to learning other Romance languages as well. Spanish is extremely similar to Portuguese, and if you learn any of these two, you will understand much of the other, especially in its written form. So if you're coming to live in Portugal, make sure you start learning Portuguese right now. The next factor to consider before moving to Portugal is the Portuguese property market. If you are moving to Portugal, you will eventually have to deal with the very unique situation that the Portuguese real estate market finds itself in. There are some places in Portugal with a huge demand, mostly from foreign investors which are even outpricing locals, other places with moderate prices and some places with a very low demand and very cheap prices. Considering the size of the country and how diverse the property market is, this is just extraordinary. If you're moving to Lisbon, I would highly recommend renting instead of buying, as the rental yields are really low, since properties are too expensive. So, you can find great deals as a tenant, but if you want property and want to find a good long-term tenant, your yearly rental yield is going to be very low in Lisbon. In other cities like Porto, Braga and Coimbra, prices are not that much detached from the local economic reality, and for that reason, both buying and renting can be actually a good idea. If you're buying property in Portugal, make sure you do not believe everything your real estate agent says. Do your own due diligence and talk to as many people as possible about licenses, paperwork, financing, fees and everything related to buying property before you commit. The next factor are salaries and the cost of living in Portugal. Salaries in Portugal are lower than the average for Western European standards and much lower than salaries in most large US cities. So if you're coming to Portugal to look for a job, bear that in mind. However, the cost of living in Portugal is the lowest in Western Europe. So even if your salary is not particularly high, you can still have a high quality of life, especially if you don't have to pay rent. If you don't have to rent a place, and especially if you don't need to rent a place in Lisbon, the average Portuguese salary will allow you to have a pretty decent quality of life considering the local costs. If your income is remote and you work for a US, Canada, Australia or UK company, you will be able to have a very high quality of life even if your salary is not impressive by US standards. So overall, Portugal is not a place with great salaries, but a place with an excellent cost of living. If you live in Lisbon and you have to rent a place and you have an average Portuguese salary, that's another story. That's probably not a very good investment, as rents in Lisbon are too high comparing to the local salaries. The last factor in today's video is the weather, Portugal's climate. Portugal has one of the best climates in Europe and possibly in the world. The country has four very well-defined seasons, but days of extreme weather are less common in Portugal than in most other countries in Europe. The climate of Portugal is different and better than in most other European countries, due to its geographical location. The influence of the Atlantic Ocean on the weather helps to minimize high temperature amplitudes throughout the year. That, combined with a lower latitude for European standards, allows Portugal to have relatively mild summers and mild winters. There are, of course, days of extreme heat in Portugal, but if you compare to more continental areas of its neighbor Spain, for example, Portugal has much less extreme days. The same applies for extreme cold days. If you compare Lisbon and Madrid in terms of climate, Madrid has just a slightly higher latitude, but in winter, Madrid is on average 5 degrees Celsius colder than Lisbon. Madrid is also at a much higher altitude, which also contributes to that. However, if you're moving to the continental port of Portugal close to the Spanish border, this is the area of the country with the most extreme days of cold and of hot weather. So if you can possibly be close to the ocean, this is probably a good idea in terms of climate. That's it for today's video. Are you considering moving to Portugal? Write a comment down below. If you're not considering moving to Portugal, write also a comment down below just sharing with us to which country you would prefer to move to. And you end the video the usual gibberish. If you want to travel, move or invest abroad, hit the like button, check our other videos, book a consultation call with me, the link is in the description. And most importantly, subscribe!
See you next time.